Today we'll be looking at Unit 3 extension, Family Functions. This is an extension lesson, so it's a little bit more challenging than the lessons we've looked at so far. So we're going to be doing an activity informative, and it is worth extra credit and honors credit. So this is one of the lessons you will need to do to get honors credit at the end of the semester. And then it is also worth extra credit on your grade. And our objective for today is I can perform, perform horizontal and vertical shifts on a function in four out of five problems. Now in that last lesson we looked at in the unit, in unit three, we were looking at vertical shifts only. So today we're going to add horizontal shifts into that. And let me pull up the formative and we can take a look at that. So here's the formative. We're looking at unit three family functions. And there are some instructions here at the top that describe a little bit about parent functions and family functions that we talked about at the end of Unit 3. So number one here, it says graph the parent function y equals x squared. This is going to be the base function that we're going to move around the graph to make family functions. And then it has a note here about how we can type this in. y equals x little caret 2. So if I type y equals x, then I have a caret, which is shift 6. That'll bring me up to the exponent, and I can type 2. That will graph this function for me, y equals x squared. Notice this says powered by Desmos down here. This is actually Desmos. So this is exactly the same as the Desmos graphing calculator. If you opened Desmos up in a separate tab or in a separate window, it would behave exactly the same. So now it says, describe what the graph looks like. Think about things like shape, domain, range, intercepts, and intervals of increase and decrease. So I'll get you started there, but I bet you can come up with several things about this graph. You can maybe look at the shape. You can look at what intercepts it has, where it crosses the x-axis, where it crosses the y-axis, where it's going down, where it's going up what its valid x values are, known as the domain, the valid y values, known as the range. Oh, and this happens sometimes. Sometimes if your mouse is on the Desmos um, area, scrolling will actually zoom it out. You can just press this little house key, and that'll bring you back to the regular zoom. So describe what the graph looks like. So we can start out, maybe it has a U shape. It has a y-intercept at 0. You can see that up here. It's crossing the y-axis at 0. It has an x-intercept at 0 as well, so that they both are intercepts at the origin. And maybe you can come up with a couple of other features to note about this graph. Then we can move on to number 3. We're going to graph the function y equals x squared plus k. So this is exactly the same as the one we just graphed, except now it has this additional uh, variable k. So I'm going to type that in exactly as it says again, y equals x caret 2. To get out of the exponent, you can use an arrow key. You can either use the right key or the down key. And then, oh, we want a plus k there. And notice as soon as I put in that plus k, we have this add slider button. So I can press that button, and it'll give me this slider. And now you can see k's value is 1. So this is going to be x squared plus 1. But I can move this slider to change the value of k. x squared plus negative 2.8 plus negative 7. So you can see the graph moving as that value of k changes. We can also press this play button, which animates it for us. It'll just move it back and forth. And there are even some animation features you can play with. We're not going to look at that in this assignment, but you're welcome to play with those anytime you'd like. You can make math animations in Desmos. I'm just going to pause this, though, 
so we don't have to watch it going back and forth. And we'll move on to the next question. So this just describes what we just did. Move the slider around, take a look at what happens. You can animate it if you want. This question asks, as k gets bigger, the function moves what direction? Up, down, left, or right? Well, let's see, as k gets bigger, let's move it up. k is going bigger. What direction is that moving? It's going up. So as k gets bigger, as we add larger values to this, we tacked it onto the end. We just said plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. As that number gets bigger, the graph goes up. Now how about when it gets smaller? Plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, plus negative 1, plus negative 5. What's happening to the graph? As k gets smaller, the function goes down. And once again, we can animate that just to see it. k is going up, graph's going up. k is going down, graph's going down. k is going up. So this number on the end, this plus k on the end, seems to affect the vertical placement on the axes. Now let's look at number 6. Now it tells us to graph the function y equals x minus h squared. Now let's talk about how we change this. Because remember we started with x, squ whoops, x squared. That was our original function. How have we changed it by adding an, an h value? Well, what we did was we put parentheses around the x. We made x kind of the separate unit by itself. And then we did subtract h inside the parentheses. This is going to be our model for horizontal shifts. h for horizontal. I don't know what k stands for. k should stand for vertical, but that's not what vertical starts with. So I don't know. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the previous graph. We're going to click this Add Slider. And we're going to watch what happens as we change the h value. It goes right and left. And we can animate it on its own. It goes right and left. And I'm just going to stop it. So we have the same questions. As h, as h gets bigger this time, the function moves what direction? Up, down, left, or right? Let's see. Let's, let's start with it all the way down. As h gets bigger, the function moves right. As h gets smaller, what direction are we moving? As h gets smaller, the function moves left. We can animate it. We'll watch it again. It goes up, 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 up. goes to the right. Then it goes down, 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 down. goes down to the left and up to the right and down to the left. So in this format where we say x minus h, the h value determines whether, whether we're going to the right or to the left. If the h value is positive, we're going to the right. If the h value is negative, we're going to the left. And then by how many units. Now notice one tricky thing between h and k, though. Notice that we added k. We did a plus k and we did a minus h. So that affects their values, it affects their direction. And we need to pay particular attention to the sign before that number. So let's take a look at a specific way to combine these. We can combine k and h to move the function anywhere on the graph. So we're going to type this exactly as it is, y equals x minus h squared plus k, so exactly like it's written up here.
we're going to add both of these sliders now. H and K. So we have K on top and then H. So now, if I want to move it up and down, remember that's this one, our K value goes up and down, up and down. And our H value goes left and right, left and right. And it asks, what values of H and K produce this graph? Uh, it looks like, so this is called a vertex. Whoops, we scrolled in again. This is called a vertex at the bottom of our graph. The bottom of the graph here. And this vertex is listed as negative 3, 7. So how are we going to shift this graph to get to negative 3, 7? It's our X value, our Y value, our horizontal shift, and our vertical shift. So let's see, well we need to move this graph to the left, I think that was the H, so we need to move it over to negative 3, looks like it's right about there. And I can actually even click on this graph and it'll show me, yeah, we're at negative 3 now. And now I just need to move it up to the 7 for the Y. My vertical shift was with the K, so I'm, let's see, I'm going to move up to 5, 6, 7, right about there. There we go, negative three, seven. That's exactly where I want it to be. All right, so these graphs match, except for the color. This one's red and this one's blue. But otherwise, they match. There you go, negative three, seven. So now we just need to look at what values of H and K we have. H is negative three up here, negative three, and K is seven. So you'll need to do that process again for this one to move it to that point. And then this one's a little bit different. This one asks, are there values of H and K that can produce this graph? If so, what are those values? If not, why not? So this is a yes or no question. Is this a graph we could produce just by shifting left and right and up and down with that function? I'll let you answer that question. And now we're going to apply this to linear and exponential functions. So we're going to start with this f of x equals 3 to the x exponential like we're familiar with. f of x equals 3 to the x. Remember our base here is 3, our exponent is x. That looks like 3 to the x we're accustomed to. Looks like an exponential, it goes forever to the left, forever up. But now we're going to change the function in the way, in a similar pattern to what we just did. So remember the first thing we did was vertical shifts. We tacked a number onto the end. Remember this could be any number. This could be 3, this could be 10, this could be negative 5. Scroll down so you can see the graph. It could, be, it could even be negative 15. All we mean by k is we're just going to make it an arbitrary number. We're going to set the number at will, ad hoc. So I'm going to click Add Slider, and now I can set the k value and see what happens. Well, that makes sense because we set a k, tacking k onto the end is just going to be a vertical shift, right? We're moving up as we go up, we're moving down as the value goes down. Up and down. We're going to make one other change here so that we get a horizontal shift as well. We're going to use that same pattern we did before. We're going to put parentheses around the x and then do minus h. Add that slider and now let's bring k back up to zero. So there's our normal exponential we're accustomed to. Now if we move the h slider, it's going to move left as we go down and then right as we go up goes left as the h value becomes negative, goes right as the h value goes more positive. So I'm just going to set this back to zero where we were with our parent function. 
And now it's asking what values of h and k would move f of x six units down and two units to the right? Well, let's think about that. Six units down, vertical shift up and down we said was going to be k. So that means our value in six, our value in k is going to be six. And we just need to determine if it's positive or negative. Is down going to be positive or negative six? Down is negative. We said it goes down when it gets smaller. So k is a negative six. And then what h value would be two units to the right? Well, we know the number is going to be two. Now the question is, is it positive two or negative two? Let's see, to move to the right, we go positive. To move to the left, we go more negative. So h two to the right is gonna be positive two. Positive two and then negative six for the k. So we moved the graph two to the right and down six. Now this was our asymptote, that's what I was looking at there. And our next part says to write the equation for the resulting function. Hmm, what, else, what does that mean? Well, let's see. We have this function up here, and we now have an h value and a k value, so we could just plug those values back in and that's going to be the function. Let me just type this in Desmos and show you. So I'm gonna make this a new function, g of x, and I'm gonna type the same thing, whoops, three to the x minus h plus k. So you notice it graphed it right over the top of it because we have the same h and k values. But if I type in two for h, and negative six for k, you'll see that's exactly where it is. That's what we mean by the graph of the function, the equation for the function. We put the exact numbers in that would graph that function, rather than having them be sliders that move it around. So that is our answer to number 18, right there. g of x equals three, to the x minus two plus negative six. So you'll answer 19, 20, and 21 in a similar way. You do a similar process. And we're gonna look at one more. So we're done with the exponential version of this. Now we're just gonna look at a linear version. It says to consider the function, linear function g of x equals negative 2x plus 5. And it wants to know, can you come up with an equation using h and k that will move this function around the graph? Try graphing it here. So pause the video and see if you can figure out, remember what pattern we used, how we added k, how we subtracted h, and see if you can reproduce that similar pattern in this function before I do it here and see if we get the same answer. So I'm going to start by typing this function exactly as it is, negative 2x plus 5. And remember, when we wanted a vertical shift, we just tack k onto the end. We just do plus k. Add the slider k. And now this will move up and down. To do a horizontal shift, it's a little more complicated. We put parentheses around the x, and then inside the parentheses, we do minus h, and then add the slider. I'm going to move this out just a little bit so you can actually see the whole function. And now I have an h slider that will move it left and right as well. Left and right, up and down. Now, Linear equations are a little bit funny. That might have looked exactly the same because it technically is pretty similar. They're just moving at different speeds. That's because a line only moves up and down, left and right. It doesn't have a particular shape. So 
moving left and right actually looks the same as moving up and down. But if you want to take like a pencil or a ruler or something on an axis and prove to yourself that's the case, you can move it up and down and left and right and notice that it looks the same. So now we have similar questions. What values of h and k would move g of x 10 units up and 4 units to the left? Remember, k is our vertical shift. h is our horizontal shift. So I'm going to let you do that one on your own. And our last problem here says to write the equation for the resulting function and be sure to simplify it if possible. So remember, to write the resulting equation, we take the value of h, plug it in for h. We take the value of k, plug it in for k, and then write the equation. So that is everything on this extension assignment. Good luck on it. I'm sure you're going to do awesome. And you can email me or text me if you have any questions or need any help on it.